All right, y'all, so it's hotter than blue blazers out here, as they say here in the South. But listen, um, looking at this property today, and I'm gonna see what needs to be done on this property. Yesterday, I analyzed it. I did everything I needed to do to see if this was gonna be a good deal. Today is the walkthrough, and I wanna take you guys along with me. Automatically, I'm seeing that it needs a new roof, it needs windows, it needs everything. So let's see what the inside looks like. All right, y'all, so let's walk through this property real quick. I'm gonna show you guys around and give you my thoughts on what I think this property needs. And then from there, I'm gonna be able to tell you what I think the exit strategy should be on this property. So we're, we're standing right here in the living room right now. This is a dated house, you know what I mean? I think this house hasn't been rehabbed since the 70s, you know, and that's being realistic. Um, I gotta go around, first thing I wanna do is count the windows, right? So you just saw outside, we looked at the roof, we looked at the exterior. There's obviously some shrubbery that needs to be cut down. We need to clean the house up. You'd be surprised what happens when you cut down trees. You'd be surprised what happens when you just pressure wash the house. I think the exterior needs to be painted as well, give it a modern look. Yes, there is brick outside, but at the end of the day, to be honest with you, um, People are painting houses these days. That's what's giving it that new construction look, that 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 new feel, so that when you uh, when you look at the house from the outside, it shows well. So if I'm gonna fix and flip this, or if I'm gonna rent it, whatever the exit strategy is gonna be, I want it to be clean. I want it to, especially if I'm gonna keep it for a long-term rental, I wanna solve all of the problems that the house has. It's like a million degrees in this house. I don't know if you can see me sweating right now, but um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, if I'm gonna keep this long term, uh, the thought process for me is to make sure everything in this house works, and I want the house to look like something I would move into, right? And that's how you're gonna get top rent for this house. If I'm fixing and flipping this, same thing. Um, I'm gonna go a little higher end on the on the materials that we put into this house based on this area. You know, in this part of North Carolina, it's called Jamestown. This used to be a big money area back in the days, like in the 90s, um, especially with the furniture market at High Point. High, you know, if you know anything about High Point, uh, there's a huge furniture market, but it used to be way bigger in the 90s. And Jamestown was the spot. It was actually one of the wealthiest counties in the entire North Carolina. So you can imagine what these houses around here look like and what, what kind of money they're gonna bring in. But this particular property, I'm um, just walking through, uh, there's vaulted ceilings over here. Let's take a look at this. It's like a million degrees with the air conditioner on. But uh, this property right here, you know, we got vaulted ceilings in here. Um, this is a nice little space. Um, I would tear all of this out just to give it a modern look. You know, I know some people like that, um, like this type of look, that panel, panel wall. Uh, feel but for me, I don't think it uh, provides that that look that we're looking for I do like that brick wall We could create an accent out of that brick wall So just you know when you're looking at these houses think up think about how you can be creative with these properties in order to bring out um, Character in the property while giving it a modern look as well, right? So this particular house look we got panel wall This is I would get rid of that. That's not even real cedar. So to Tear those off of the wall. Um, I wouldn't do much to this particular space structurally because it's gonna cost more money, but you'd be surprised what you can accomplish when you tear up the carpet and you, and you give it some paint with some new fixtures in here as well. Let's go over to the dining room. So right here in the dining room, is a small space right here, but if I knock that little shelf down over there, if I knock this shelf down, it's gonna open this room up and uh, there's gonna be perceived space in here, right? So you got perceived value by knocking this shelf down. This is actually a pretty cool shelf, I like it. Um, but to open up the space, people like open floor print plans these days. So I would knock this down just to give the perception that this room is bigger than what it is. It's way too small and closed in. Right now, I'm gonna head into the kitchen real quick. There's a sliding door right here into the kitchen. That's a cool feature 
that this house has. So that's something I would actually leave um, just to provide, you know, uh, some character to the property. But this kitchen, I would tear out this entire kitchen, right? If I'm going to keep this property, I would tear this whole thing out. If I'm going to rehab this property, I'm definitely tearing this out and adding new appliances. But this is a whole gut job in the kitchen right here. Um, another thing I would do just to open up the space a little bit. Um, well, I can't do it right here because there's a there's a closet there but if there wasn't a closet there you see how there's a shelf right here i would cut this wall completely down or at least open up a window in order to create more of an open floor type of look but in this space i don't think you really need to do that well you really can't do that because we got this linen closet right here that, that will prevent us from being able to do that in the first place so you got the closet right here and it's not conducive to, be, to being able to do that right now. Unless we cut this whole wall down. And that's not what I'm trying to do financially on this property. I'm trying to keep the cost low while giving the most value uh, into this house to be able to make it look presentable uh, for rent or for sale. All right. In this bathroom, I will put about three grand into this. Uh, maybe five uh, if we redo the tiles. I don't think we need to get rid of this tub. We can epoxy this tub right here, get a brand new dual flush toilet bowl, brand new vanity, brand new mirror, brand new everything in here, tear up this tile, redo the tile uh, for three to $5,000, this bathroom could be done. So in this bedroom right here, um, it's real basic. You know, there's not, not much that we have to talk about in this bedroom. We redo the, the carpet, we redo the flooring, we redo the light fixtures, give it a modern look, change out this uh, this vent right here, uh, give it more of a modern look, and this is a basic bedroom. Structurally, I got to tell you that this house looks really good. I like it a lot. Um, but I do think the house is aged. But when you're investing in real estate, I got to tell you, man, these are the types of houses that you're looking for. When you're investing these are the gold mines most people shy away from stuff like this when i see this i see money okay this is an estate sale house is listed on the mls people want to uh buy houses like this on the mls um in order to fix and flip or fix and rent especially an investor this house won't be mortgageable because um it needs too much work so this is where the investors come into play who can pay cash like myself to be able to get deals like this. Now, just because I can pay cash doesn't necessarily mean that you need cash in order to be able to do this. You can go to a hard money lender. You can get private money to get things like this done. You can partner with other investors and split the money, right? But the opportunities are in places just like this. This is just the right amount of work without having to rebuild a house. And you can add the value into this to be able to increase uh, the value. Plus, it's in a great neighborhood. So um, I'm going to have to do all of the windows just looking at these. These are all old windows. You know, this is one, two, three, four windows in this room. I think each bedroom has at least four windows. Yep. That's eight. This is the master, master bedroom right here. Um, you can see that there was potential water damage up there. You know, um, that tells me that the roof, the, that tells me that the roof more than likely needs to be done, um, which, you know, I already verified looking at the outside when I was with you guys out there, um, we saw that the roof needed to be done, right? So um, this little half bath right here, I can go in there and really paint and put a new toilet, put a new floor, really 2,500 bucks to get that bathroom done. We've got a closet over here as well. This is the master suite. I think they were using it as an office at one point because they have a desk in here. I'm not sure, um, but this is, I would use it as a master, a master bedroom in order to be able to um, get the value out of this house. So just coming over here. So we got one, two, three bedrooms, one and a half bath, got a kitchen, dining room, living room, and even a family room in this house, right? This is a great deal. You can't get to the basement without going outside and going around back. There is a pathway 
that will lead you into the the door uh, where, the, where the basement is located. This deck, I will completely tear this whole thing down and uh, rebuild it. I think that's going to be at least a $10,000 deck right there. I might even build it smaller than this but because because this is a huge deck that's taking up a lot of the uh, backyard. So I will probably make this deck about half this size and tear down a lot of these trees in the back in order to be able to create some space and create uh, that livable feel in the backyard. If I'm rehabbing it, even if I'm renting. Again, a lot of the things that I would do if I were fixing and flipping, I would do if I was fixing and renting. Um, the, the, the things I might change is the type of material I put in the house. For example, if, I, if I'm gonna fix and flip, I might go ahead and drop some LVP in here, some vinyl planks, some luxury vinyl planks. I would do the same exact thing if I were to uh, fix and rent because that stuff lasts long, right? It's uh, waterproof. You can, you can get away with the look and feel of a fix and flip while commanding high rents in the area because of the way it looks, right? So this is a, uh, a basic property. I think that this here is an extension. So they turned the extension into a laundry room. Um, looking at the, the duct work up here um, and the uh, insulation that, you know, up here, I think this insulation needs to be changed out. Um, you can see we got drop ceiling up in here and everything like that as well. Um, I would clean this room up you know, make it look more presentable, obviously. Um, and we'll have ourselves, ourselves a laundry room as well. So on this particular property, um, you know, as I've mentioned, there's three ways to make money in real estate. You have wholesaling, you have fixing and flipping, and you have buy and hold. I ran the numbers. Okay. I told you guys about that already. If you wanna see how I ran the numbers from the very beginning, I actually went through it with my elite coaching students yesterday before I came here. So I kinda knew the numbers before I walked into the property. First thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at the asking price versus the comps. I'm looking at uh, how much the rental comps are going for. And then I come out to see the property to see if it's worth me moving forward on. This is something I would definitely, I'm definitely gonna make an offer on this. Looking at this house, I think it needs about $50,000 in work. Judging off the comps, this house can sell for 200 to 220, somewhere in that neighborhood, we have to verify that. And if I'm basing it off of, let's say 200, I need to pay 90 grand, maybe 100,000 in order to get this as a fix and flip. If I'm gonna buy and hold this, I need to be right around that $90,000 to $95,000 number um, just to leave myself a little bit of breathing room. If I'm gonna wholesale this particular property, I need to, I need to get it below that $90,000, $80,000 number. I would like to make at least 10 grand on a property like this, maybe 20. I would need to get this property between 70 and 80,000 in order to be able to make that happen. The problem with wholesaling this right now, even though it's on the MLS, I would have to double close because it's on the MLS, right? So that's gonna cost me more money to be able to double close this property and that's gonna cut into my $10,000 profit. It'll probably leave me around six to $7,000 in profit. So I probably won't wholesale it because number one, the asking prices are over 130,000. It's about 132 grand on the asking price. Number two, other people are looking at this property. And number three, I would have to cut the price almost in half in order for me to be able to get this, uh, this deal as a wholesale deal. So as a fix and flip, I can pay more because my exit strategy is different, right? So as a fix and flip, I can pay close to 100, if not 100,000 with the intentions of putting 40 to 50 into it and then turning around and reselling it for 200 to 220 based on the amount of work that we put into the property. Same thing with a, with a buy and hold. If I buy and hold this, um, I can be all into this property for about 150. The dilemma with buying and holding on this is the amount of rent that I can actually get. So I can probably get about 1750 
on this house um, based on the comps that I ran in this market in order for me to be able to get 1750 I need to be like somewhere right around 120 because I want to be at 1.3 1.5% of the price versus rent okay so uh, you know if you know anything about the 1% rule uh, you want to be at least 1% of the asking price. So, for example, if you got a $100,000 house, you want to be able to rent that house for at least $1,000 a month. In this market, that number needs to go up, right? So, if you got a $100,000 house, you need, to be able, you need to be able to get at least $1,500 on the property. I'm over here dripping. My, my point in bringing all of this up is it's all in the numbers. My decision is all based on numbers, that's how I'm looking at this property as an investor, not emotionally. I'm not emotionally attached to this property at all. I'm thinking about how much profit I can make from this property. If I were to buy and hold this, number one, my mortgage after taxes and insurance is probably going to be closer to $1,600 uh, based on that 1.5% rule, 1.3% rule. That, that number is not going to work especially in, in today's market with today's interest rates. We're currently over 7%. And if you're a refi cashing out, it's going to be a lot more, right? So um, with that being said, I'm going to have to fix and flip this property. And in order for me to fix and flip it, I need to be at about 100 grand, put 40 to 50 into it, sell it for 200 to 220. That's what my game plan is on this property. It feels like a sauna in here right now. So I'm not going to uh, stay in this house too much longer. But if you want more detail on how I, you know, my thought process from getting the property on the MLS through my realtor, who happens to be my niece, by the way, um, how, I, how she sent the property, how I automatically looked at the property from an investor standpoint into today where I'm actually viewing the property and making an offer on it. Check out my Family Vault Patreon group. Now, when you join my Family Vault Patreon group, what I'm doing for this particular month is I'm providing you with the coaching call replay that I just did yesterday with my elite coaching group members. And you'll be able to get access to that to see how we play this deal from start to finish. So I'm gonna offer $100,000 on this property. I think that this property will be worth it. My niece is going to run comps to verify we could get between two and two, 220 on it. And as long as we could get somewhere in that window, I think 100000 would be a great deal. They just got to accept it. Again, this is an estate sale. It's not a typical foreclosure. This property needs work. You can see that they're getting rid of stuff in the house. This could be a great deal at 100000 We can make a quick fifty to $70,000. I'm going to take that and run. Doesn't make financial sense to rent it. And it definitely doesn't make sense to wholesale anything like this. So I hope that you guys benefited from today's video. Be sure to like it, subscribe, click the notification bell. Check out that Family Vault Patreon group. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.